This is my classroom. Yeah, that'll work. Okay. I want to thank everybody who came out today. Parents, teachers, students, concerned citizens, the wind, because this fight is important. The ongoing fight for a quality public education, which is enshrined, as Justin just reminded us, in our constitution in this state, it's worth fighting for. Yeah. It's cold this afternoon, but our hearts and souls are fired up. <laughs> the fire burns because we know, this crowd knows, every parent, every teacher, every student in this state knows that a quality education is worth fighting for. Yeah. It's part of our heritage. Yes. It's a fire that burns because we know how important this are. We're cold this afternoon, but we're warmed by the fact that we're standing here together as North Carolinians fighting for the future of our great state. We're fired up in our collective determination to stop the leadership of the General Assembly from betraying our heritage. We're standing out here in the cold today because the North Carolina General Assembly has thrown our students into the cold. North Carolina's economy and revenue collection have rebounded substantially since the Great Recession of 2008. But too many hard-working families have not shared in this bounty. Specifically, our children are being deprived of the same quality of education that North Carolina students enjoyed just a decade ago. Many members of the General Assembly will argue. They will tell you, they will show you charts and graphs that they have increased funding for public education since 2008. But they won't include the number of students. We've got 70,000 more students in 2008 and we've all experienced this little thing called inflation since 2008. We're 20% behind on a pure people basis where we were to 2008. We've cut class offerings, we've cut teacher, teacher assistance, we've cut our textbook budget. And now, just to put a little bit of salt in the wound, they want to throw a class size cap on us with no funding. No thought as to the consequences. And they want to take an already precarious situation and they want to convert that into an outright disaster. Our children in this state deserve better. Yeah. Nobody thinks that the unfunded class size cap is a good law. 115 superintendents know that the unfunded class size cap is a bad law. 115 school boards know that the unfunded class size cap is a bad and a destructive law. My Senator Jim Davis from the western part of the state, he always decried, we don't need to bill him, we just need to tell him the truth every day. My Senator Jim Davis always decried unfunded mandates when he was a Macon County Commissioner. I'm here this afternoon to ask Senator Davis to stay true to his values, to remember his days as a Macon County Commissioner, and to demand his Senate leadership and his fellow Senators to introduce legislation this coming week to repeal the class size cap. I want Senator Davis and the leadership to grasp the truth that this class size cap is an unfunded mandate. It is a destructive requirement to lower class size without the funds to hire the teachers, without the funds to keep our physical education, art, and music teachers. The General Assembly has made no provision for the additional classrooms that we would have to build in order to comply with this law. Now, I don't know what it's going to cost in Mecklenburg, I don't know what it's cost in Wake, We've got an $8 million current operating expense budget. It would cost us $350,000 to comply with the law, but then on top of that $350,000, we would cut essential programs. We would cut class offerings. Our class sizes in fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth grades would swell. I was able to converse with uh, Dr. Garrett, superintendent of Haywoods County. That's Waynesville, Canton. She shared with me this past week that the cost of Haywood County would be $700,000 just to comply with the law, but if she wanted to maintain the same quality as what she has right now in her school district, it would be $1.6 million. They don't have that money. No amount in making or Haywood reflects the cost of the additional required classrooms. We have no brick and mortar money. So as Justin was just reminding us, we're left with only cynical conclusions that the leadership of the General Assembly wants the talking point to say that they support public education while they're actually actively destroying it. They get the talking point and we get the bill and the burden of providing a subpar education for our youngest, our most vulnerable children. 
And all of this is being done while the state's running budget surpluses, hoarding the cash for a raining day. While it feels cold and chilly out here, we have a little bit of snow across the state in the public education classrooms, it's raining. We need these funds today, and we need a repeal, repeal of the roadblocks like the class size cap. We're calling on Senate Majority Leader Phil Berger to allow a vote to repeal the class size cap. We're, we're calling on his fellow senators to call him today to demand a vote. We're calling on the North Carolina House to demand the changes. We feel that we're not asking for much, that we're only asking for the quality of education that we were able to provide for our children in 2008. We're requiring for an end for the educational destructiveness and a return to commitment to all children in the state. We have the resources that we need to provide a high quality public education. All we need is the political will from our elected officials. So Senator Davis and my representative Kevin Corbin, if you support us this coming week, please stand up and demand a repeal of this law. Thank you all very much.